Hey guys, VFX Bro here with a rundown of the effects scene in the U2 police video. Now, obviously, the, uh, the biggest key to achieving the effect scene in this video is the green screen. Um, but I'm going to be running through some of the uh, details and things we had to work around when doing these shots. Um, the one I'm going to be going through is, which was the most complicated shot, which was the um, Lonely Island video um, of us on the end of the boat protecting um, Andy Samberg as a lifeguard. So what we did was we actually shot this um, out on a field where Zach and I were on this um, drum chair that kind of rotated around and uh, we stood on it and had the other one of us rotate us around so that we can get the uh, 3D perspective change seen in the um, original shot. And then we just had a had a green screen set up behind us. So with the shot brought in, we went ahead and uh, green screened out the background using key light. Um, there is going to be a link right here um, with uh, a tutorial on how to use that green screen. Uh, pretty simple stuff. And then we also uh, had to add an additional mask around the feet um, just because uh, the chair wasn't green screened and, um, and we had to work around that. So you can sometimes stay on a green screen. We didn't have enough um, green screen real estate to uh, be able to do that. But um, for this shot, uh, it wasn't too difficult to mask that out. And then as you can see, as we move through this frame by frame, uh, the mask moves um, to adjust for the uh, difference in my foot positioning on the screen. So after that um, happened, um, we pre-keyed that and um, also added in a uh, a gray solid for the uh, for the um, shadows. So we've got that added in there, and uh, looks pretty good. It rotates around so that my feet look as though they have shadows on them, and then we pre-keyed that, or we pre we pre-comped that. So after that's been done, uh, we motion tracked the shot using a 3D motion track and PF track. Um, there is going to be a link right here for that tutorial. Um, so after having a 3D motion track, that you can see here that we have myself put in there. You can see the null objects, which are different trackers that we added into the scene. The you want to make sure that um, that your subject is lined up with the camera. So as you can see, you can see the actual shot of me um, placed into the scene is rotating um, so that it stays with the camera, and um, that rotation makes it avoids me looking flat in the image and gives me that 3D perspective look. So. Um, Make sure that, um, as I mentioned in an earlier tutorial, when you have your uh, your subject selected, you're going to go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient, and then you're going to make sure that it's oriented towards the camera. Um, so with that oriented towards the camera, we have it um, looking as though I was actually there. Now another key here was um, since the ro since the way that I was rotated by Zach wasn't exactly perfect with the shot, we kind of uh, adjusted for that by doing a time remap. And what we do with that is we, we take a, a keyframe right where um, we, we saw that I started to get off track a little bit. So you can see here that the camera is doing, in the real shot, the camera is spinning around at the speed right here, um, which is pretty consistent. And then right here, it starts to back away from the boat. And so the change in perspective isn't going to be as great because we're not moving that far. Um, in degrees relative to the subject. So right here we set a keyframe and then later on we set another keyframe and we dragged it out so that it slowed down. So what we can see here is that as we drag this, if we drag this um, time keyframe forward and back, it's going to adjust the amount of rotation that I have. So it's a really easy way to um, um, compensate for um, differences in the perspective change between your subject and um, the original shot. So we have that keyframe selected and if we move it back and forth um, it kind of just adjusts how how far I um, was was rotated in the shot. So we've got that taken care of and um, the next step um, after that was to adjust the levels. Levels is something that I use on almost every green screen shot, something that you want to get 
um, familiar, familiar with definitely and the levels are just um, to um, adjust for the uh, pretty much the exposure in the scene so um, you can see that not black black in a, in a real scene isn't necessarily true black and uh, what we did for this shot actually was um, we brightened me up because you can see that the brights in this shot are were a little bit brighter than the original shot so if I take off the levels you can see what the original um, exposure was and uh, you can see that it, I look a little bit more green screen here because my exposure levels aren't exactly the same as the shot. So we tried to compensate that by changing the levels so that the dark, the darks were actually a little bit darker because um, you can see there's quite a bit of contrast in the scene. Um, so levels is something you want to definitely get used to and um, it takes kind of a lot of eyeing um, to see and to make sure that you, the original shot matches with um, your green screen footage. So after we do that, we pre comp that and we moved it into this final comp right here. And um, what we did for this here is the biggest difference was adding in the shadow. And uh, for, the, for that shadow, um, what we did was we took an adjustment layer and um, we made it, we took down the levels so that it was affecting, uh, it was affecting, we didn't want to just put black, but we wanted it to ad affect our background. So if you use an adjustment layer, it's going to affect different colors in different ways, which is perfect because that's what shadows do in real life. So um, we took uh, the adjustment layer here, which was um, which was uh, me. And so uh, all we really did for this is we, we want, you want to make sure that your shadows are affecting an area that you can uh, um, realistically duplicate. So we had me placed here, and so the shadow um, is on flat ground, which makes it really easy to do because it's just flat. And um, so we've got that adjustment layer on, and... Um, what we did was we used that adjustment layer and set it as an alpha mat for myself. And um, that shot of myself, we uh, rotated so that it was on the ground here. So originally we just copied it. It was I was originally up here like this and then we flattened it out on the ground and, uh, and then we stretched it out um, just because that's what um, shadows look like, or at least in this scene. So we had that stretched out shadow, and then we had our adjustment layer um, alpha matted to that shot of me, so that it matches perfectly. And uh, obviously, this is all in this is all placed in 3D in After Effects um, or 2.5D. And uh, as uh, as the camera perspective changes, so does the uh, shadow. So it works out perfectly. Um, so yeah, there you have it. If you have any questions, um, feel free to comment below. Um, one other thing I know that in the uh, video, um, at the end, I asked the question of which one of us you uh, thought was green screen between Zach King, Final Cut King, and I, the VFX Pro. And um, Zach was actually the one green screened. So if you watched this tutorial all the way through, now you know. And um, yeah, uh, this has been VFX Bro with a breakdown in the YouTube police video. Take care, guys.